Hey, you're listening to Innovators Can Laugh, the fun startup podcast. I'm your host, Eric Melcher. On ICO, we interview an innovative entrepreneur in the European tech startup scene every week. My goal is to have my guests share their wisdom while having a little fun in the process. Now let's dive in. Nicole Kava, pleasure having you on the show today on Innovators Can Laugh. Uh, before we get started, can you just describe yourself for the audience uh, quickly? Yeah, thank you. So hello everyone, my name is Nicole Kava. I'm based in Lyon, France, but originally from the US. And I'm the founder of Avenue, which is a pet travel startup. All right, fantastic. Dig in the glasses that you have there, Nicole. Really, really uh, cool glasses. Uh, to get started, and I always do this, I just ask a few quirky questions so the audience can get to know you a little bit better. Can you tell us a favorite childhood toy that you had when you were growing up? A favorite childhood toy? Ooh. All right. Well, my dad definitely spoiled me and my sister. He was so happy to have two little girls. So we had <laughs> twins of toys and a toy box full of things. I would always say I loved baby dolls. Don't, didn't like Barbies, but I just loved babies, baby dolls. <laughs> so I can't say like one that I had a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. Okay. But sometimes I had nightmares okay, of cool. Furby, like the Furbies. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if I can mention that one. Hey, the Furbies are those, those, those things that adults wear in the suits, right? Like uh, different animal costumes type thing, right? Yeah, kind of like they were little in the 90s and they would like talk. They would like shake and talk like, feed me. And these, <laughs> I have these nightmares sometimes in Furbies, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never got into Furbies, but uh, I think I'm a little bit older than you. I won't say but you can tell from the gray hair. Second question for you, Nicole. What celebrity did you have a crush on as a teenager? This should be a pretty quick answer here, unless you had multiple crushes on many different celebrities. I can't. This is terrible because I literally, I cannot, uh, I'm not a big celebrity person and most of the artists I listen to were females other than like, Okay. Was it an athlete? I can't maybe? think of one. Politician? Was it what? <laughs> a politician maybe or an athlete? I really okay. liked Ginobili from the Spurs. How about that? Ginobili? Ginobili? Yeah. Okay. No, I, I like him too. I didn't have a crush on him, but I think he's a great uh, passer. <laughs> and he was spectacular. Oh, I, I'll never forget the uh, the blog he did on James Harden during, I think it was game six of the finals that clinched uh, San Antonio over Houston. Amazing. Amazing. I think he's one of the most underrated basketball players. But anyway, that's a different story. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay. Last question for you. Last quirky question. This is a fill in the blank question, Nicole. So fill in the blank on this one. Instead of flowers for Valentine's Day. You would rather receive blank instead chocolate of flowers or vinyl. Valid, chocolate. chocolate or vinyl? I love chocolate. Yeah. I want both. Okay. <laughs> uh, smooth, smooth jazz, definitely, and chocolate. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you clarified that because when you said vinyl, you didn't say vinyl records. So vinyl could mean a few different things there. Um, at least I think so. I, I'm not sure. Quite sure. Okay. All right. Smooth jazz and chocolate. Very, very well. Okay. Well, let's get, let's get started here. When, when you traveled, uh, in the past, you rarely saw pets on planes. And if you did, there were mostly like icing dogs, things like that. But now you're starting to see more and more pets. Is there something changing in the industry, uh, in regards to people traveling with pets? Yeah, I mean, there's a few different things. It's a difference in our generation. This is like the generation that has had the most pets. We could even see like generations ago, uh, our parents or grandparents would have children very young, larger families, and it's like dwindling down less and less, the delay having children for those who do plan to. And so a lot of people instead are choosing to have pets. And so this is an interesting 
uh, changed, I think, in the world, but also uh, more more people have pets and there's more pet friendly options available. So I'll even mention like Airbnb just added in that you can find pet friendly accommodations. Uber just announced they're doing uh, local launches that you can add your pets. There's a few other pet focused uh, initiatives and campaigns that have been going down. So I think that's really showing that people can more easily travel with their pets. And that's exactly why we've launched at such a perfect turn because of this. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I had no idea that Airbnb was doing that as well as Uber. So that that's very, very cool. I'm going to tell my brother-in-law to use Airbnb because last Christmas he booked our stay at this big, big uh, barn that was converted into this nice house. And it was great and everything, but it was in the middle of nowhere. And uh, for four days, we were just kind of stuck there. And finally, on the day three, I figured it out that he booked the place because it was pet friendly, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we wouldn't stay anywhere, anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to tell him to well, check that place it. out and maybe he can find something. There's not a lot of options. That That's the challenging part. Now that we've solved the piece on flying with your pet, the, the next challenging piece is finding accommodations. Because there's even hotels that allow pets, but they don't allow you to leave your pet unaccompanied. So you have to always have your pet with you. You can't leave your pet in the room. So yeah, there's there's limited options, but we're definitely saying like now that they've allowed for pet-friendly options, we're going to see more and more accommodations being open to it. So yeah, although a barn sounds nice, okay. you may have more options. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, this is a good segue into Avenue. So tell us about Avenue and how you got the idea for it. Yeah, so, so we actually launched Avenue a year ago, and we were focused before on relocating abroad. So as I mentioned, I'm living abroad, you're living abroad. There's so many people living abroad or adventuring, going outside of their comfort zone. And we noticed that a lot of the people we were working with were relocating with their pet. And that was a piece that they could not figure out. So we worked with a lot of different customers there, but it wasn't until December that my husband actually surprised us with my own dog who is Coco and I post about a lot on Twitter, for example. And when we got Coco, we actually had a planned trip in two weeks to visit my family. And so it was an immediate pain point for us of like, okay, how exactly do we book him on the flight? What kind of carrier does he need? What are the rules around traveling with him? And then what happens when we need to now travel back to France with our dog? And so that's when we started diving deeper into finding out like, Honestly, it's very complicated and it's quite sad that the industry requires you have to call the airline in order to book your pet. And so imagine you have to wait an hour just to even get on, on a phone with, with somebody at the airline and nobody likes calling the airline. Let's be honest. Like it's not, it's not a good start to your day if that's what you have to do. So, um, so yeah, yeah, so just really realize firsthand, like how complicated it is to travel with your pet, especially every airline has different rules and regulations. Every country has different import requirements. And so that's why we, uh, we really saw an opportunity to say, you know what, we're understanding how complex this is, but it can be solved. And that's what prompted us to actually build Avenue. And especially because I plan on traveling, so I needed this to make it easier because I don't plan on calling airlines. I don't, I want to be able to book a flight with my pet all online. And so that's why we, we started at Avenue. Yeah. Okay. How are you making easy, it easy for the, for the customer? I mean, what do they get excited about when they discover Avenue and go on the platform? Yeah. So as the first pet travel booking engine, the way that it works is all around, you start with your pet's information. So if you're traveling with your pet, you add your pet's information, like what um, species, what, what their measurements are, is it an emotional support animal, is it a service animal? And from there, you ask where are you planning to travel? So once you add in that information, you will actually see the exact flight your pet can go on. So we've already identified, does your pet meet the airline's requirements? And does it um, meet the country's requirements if you're traveling internationally? So, so that's the difference is that everything on our platform is pet first. And if you're looking at any other booking site, 
it's passengers only and pets are like figure it out later hopefully yeah. figure it out and you know we're putting yeah. that as priority can airlines deny uh pets I'm, i mean of course if it's a if it's an exotic animal that is not legal you can't own a lion or maybe travel with a lion at least that's what i'm assuming right but are there certain restrictions yeah yeah so airlines if so what are those restrictions yeah so an example of the type of restrictions they'll do a restriction based on well so species first so if it's a dog cat some will allow like turtles falcons uh rabbits household birds <laughs> so so yeah they will actually tell you what species they allow then what breed so there are some airlines for example i, I find this to be the wildest one but there be some airlines that say uh chihuahuas are not allowed on our flight on our airline so <laughs> but, other, but other breeds are okay. So it, it really depends. You know, they're very, they can be very restrictive. More commonly are like, you know, dogs that are snub nose. So like pugs, bulldogs, but not all of them to restrict yeah. them. So it's, it's good to know. Then all the way yeah. down to the aircraft. So a, a specific aircraft may not allow a pet. So you could be booking a flight on any other booking site and go, oh, I like this flight. It's a good price. I'm going to have my pet. But then the airline will say, actually, never. Sorry. You can't because that aircraft doesn't allow pets. Where you have pets in the aircraft as well, like only on economy, them allowing you to have pets in business, but rarely do they allow you to have pets in first class. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go to first class and I'm going to take my pet, that may not be the case. So we actually show you exactly yeah. what flight you can take with your pet. Okay. Do you do, uh, do customers upload like pictures of their dogs or anything like that? I'm just wondering, again, I'm trying to wonder what the experience is like here yeah, <laughs> when you're oh. looking for an available one. Uh... So we only launched a month ago and the first thing that we do have is you know, the test profile, but we haven't added the feature okay. for you to add your picture, but we do plan on expanding the profile. It's one of our next um, expansions is in the pet profile, you can add your pet's photos, um, you can add different things around their health information. So like, when do they get vaccinations? Do they have allergies? Do they have, you know, do they have diabetes? Anything like this that would be really helpful to know and let the airline know as well. And then they can upload documents around their travel. Yeah. Okay. How are you putting this together? Are you scraping a lot of like terms and conditions and, and pet policies from the different airlines, you know, just to get an idea of what's uh, available or not? Do you have a team in place? I know you just launched a year ago. So just kind of paint a picture of what your, what your team looks like and where you currently are. I know you just launched a month, a month ago, but like where you are right now, are you, are users, can users go on there now and actually book a flight? Yeah. So let's start, let's start with the team first. Yeah, so on our team, we're really excited. So we have four people on our team. So it's myself, we have a software engineer, and she has a logistics background and actually previously exited a startup. Then we also have an industry expert who comes from the airline industry, who has more than 25 years of experience, so wealth of knowledge into how all of these like technical systems work in the airline industry. And then we also have a customer success person on our team. So really like covering the, the main aspects that we need for launching because actually then your second question you can actually book your flight so the way that we set it up is yes like we have worked with airlines to gather this information so we've actually contacted airlines confirmed and validated what their airline type policy is because it's not always visible on their website and we work in um, conjunction with the international air transport association so that we also work with their live animals regulation policy and so have all of this data and then sits on top of our travel booking engine. So this is our special API, and then we have the booking engine. So everything is showing you the flight, but you can actually book the flight. Okay. What's been some of your business, biggest obstacles so far to get to this point? The biggest obstacle would be, you know, in, in some cases when we've had to like verify some of this information and I think maybe analyze, analyzing the data across the industry took some time. Uh, every airline does it differently. Some will say like, oh, we restrict for you to travel this location versus this one. And, and so I'd say that would be the most challenging, but once we got over that and figured out, okay, here's the basis for our data structure, um, everything else seemed to, to work out really well because we already understood the pain point of what we needed to solve. 
Um, okay. <laughs> okay. What is the, I guess, what is the projected revenue for 2022 and just like projected users of the platform, customers of the platform? Yeah, so it, we're really early. So right now, like our, our major KPI, I will say, is actually not necessarily users. It's actually flight searches. So since our KPI is more around, are people searching for flight? So it's just like, if you're going on Google or if you're on Expedia or Skyscanner, you may search flights, but you may not create an account. And so for us, like we don't cap, we're not uh, focusing as much on those who create an account, but those who actually are searching because we're so young, we're so early. Um, at the stage. So as our first month, like our baseline is definitely more than 5,000 searches a month, or at least like uh, in the next few weeks. So we plan on incrementally scaling that over, over the course of the year, but we have major partnerships launching. So, you know, it, it's hard for us to like have a good number on it just yet because we're so early stage, but we're really excited about some major partnerships coming up in the summer. Okay. What are you doing from the marketing side? Like, how are you raising awareness for it? What do you focus on right now currently? Yeah. So kind of on the partnership side, we've actually partnered with more than 12 pet brands. So those are kicking off shortly, but basically what we're doing is we're offering a discount to some of their uh, users to say, Hey, de like a dedicated email. Hey, Avenue just launched. If you're planning to travel with your pet and here's $25 off your trip and here's a promo code. These pet brands have millions of users and they're our direct customers. So we're giving that discount if they're planning with or without their pet. So really just getting them into give that brand awareness because we know that's the first thing is like brand awareness and then we can really focus on optimizing that for conversion. So yeah, so those are kicking off soon. And even later today, I have an amazing call. I'm really excited about with um, a few tourism board that are actually looking to do complete pet brand pet campaign. So. Okay. This is so exciting. Based on your research, where are you focused on? I mean, I know Americans love pets and they're probably more than any other, uh, any other, more than any other nationality. I think Americans take the cake in terms of, you know, we spoil our pets, but are there other countries that you're also targeting as well? I mean, our main target is in the U.S., I will say. Another would be in the U.K., just because of how complex it is. Surprisingly, in the U.K., they have a rule where you cannot travel with your pet in cabin. So because of that, it's even harder. So yes, yeah, definitely in the U.S. Since we're a travel, travel is everywhere. You can be anywhere booking flight anywhere. So that's, that's why, you know, we're focusing on the U.S., but mainly any English-speaking uh, people at this time. Yeah. But you're right. Uh, let's talk about how you got, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about how you got Avenue started off the ground. Were you a part of any accelerators, any, any, uh, startup groups that, that have helped you, uh, since the launch and are continuing to help you or tell us about that. Yeah. So since the launch, well, I would say when we were focused on relocation, I did join a few incubators here in Lyon, France. However, I will say the, the speed and the level uh, of intensity is not comparable to that of any accelerator in the U.S. Um, but I did also join On Deck, which is a community for entrepreneurs, um, startup founders. I already had the idea for admin before joining, but it just was a great way to build out my network, leverage people's expertise. And I plan on actually, I was accepted recently into a a pet care specific program, which is called Leap Ventures. And they are actually run okay. by Mars Pet Care, which is one of the top pet conglomerates in the world. So we're really excited about doing that, which will be like four days uh, in Montpellier and uh, talking all about pets. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. <laughs> Okay. Also to help you to get this off the ground, like, did you fundraise or are you bootstrapping all of this, uh, financially just kind of give us a, a overview. Yeah. So we're actually raising a pre-seed round. So we're still actively in our fundraise, if I'm allowed to say. So maybe by the time this release or in a few weeks, we'll be, um, wrapping up our round, be able to announce that publicly. Okay. All right. Very, very cool. So a couple of other questions for you still, still related to traveling and airports and things like that. I, uh, I proposed to my wife at the airport, but I understand that you met your husband at the airport. How did that happen? 
I did. Oh, that's so cute. Thank you for poster. Yeah. So we actually, we, I have to explain it like this. We're both living in New York, but we both happen to be visiting our fam My family is visiting his family in Florida. And we were both waiting for our flight, a JetBlue flight, back to New York. So the way that it was, we're both sitting next to each other waiting for, you know, for them to call the the different section. Yeah. And he, he was traveling with his father and his brother and his father started like, I guess he's with, uh, by, he was looking at the plane and my husband was like looking for him and started like telling him in Spanish, like, yeah. you're going to get followers, followers. You're, you're not going to be able to board the plane, <laughs> you're going to leave without you, and all these funny things. And so I started laughing. So he was singing in Spanish, and he just started laughing because it was like, so yeah. hilarious. He sat, beside, he sat behind me, so we were both back to back, and uh, he turned to me and he said, oh, so you must speak Spanish, because I heard you laugh. And uh, that was the first thing yeah. he said to me, and then the rest is history, because we just kept talking, 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 talking. And when we arrived in New York, he was like, where, you know, where are you in the city? And I was actually far from where he was living and any, anything that's like more than 30 minutes traffic and difficult in New York. So like, he was like, okay, yeah. let's see if this will work out. You're kind of far. And we went on a date the next day. <laughs> I literally have spent almost every day together since, and it's been six years now. So. <laughs> <laughs> So that's our, that's okay, our short that version cool of our, our love story. <laughs> so Very, very cool. Very cool to hear. Okay. Where can people learn more about you, uh, Nicole? Uh, they can learn about me, I guess, connecting with me on Twitter. I'm pretty active on Twitter. So if you look me up, Nicole X Kava. Same thing on LinkedIn. I'm also active there. Or if you just want to have a call and get to know me better, like I'm always open to meeting people. Eric, we've met before. Uh, just do a you know connection on LinkedIn on uh, Twitter. I'm sorry, and uh, so I'm always happy to meet new people. All right, thank you so much, Nicole. Pleasure having you on the show. Everybody listening, uh, feel free to tell others about the show. That's how we let it grow. And if you like it, give us a review on Spotify or Apple. Thank you so much. Bye, Nicole. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening to the show. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could give us a review and star rating. Also, don't forget to sign up for the ICO newsletter at innovatorscanlaugh.com where you can get the bio and details of each guest. Thanks. <laughs>